like the fact that this is a super mega project. And we know that some of the most interesting places in New York City are, of course, the places that have been adapted and changed over time and have heritage and a real level of granularity to the uses. And I'm wondering if you can speak to how you ensure in a project of this scale that you're creating a place that doesn't feel too sterile. Um, that's a great question and it's the most vexing question we face. This, I don't think there's an easy answer to it. And I know we have to get it right, and I'm always deathly afraid that we might not. And uh, Amanda Burton, uh, the planning commissioner from the city, she said, look, you know, if you get it right 100 feet down, no one's going to care about the other 600 feet above. And I think she's absolutely right on that, but I still kind of have sleepless nights worrying about 100 feet down. Because um, it is, they're, they're big spaces, they're in the 18 yards alone, it's five acres, so it's more than the Plaza in Lincoln Center. Um, but it's smaller than Bryant Park, so it, you know, it's very, very hard, and we've had this debate internally, like, okay, let, let's pick a space anywhere in the world that, you know, we'd like to be as good as, or be somewhat similar to. No one's come up with one yet. I mean, you know, we talk about European cities, but we don't have the right scale surrounding the piazza. We, you know, in modern, you know, North American cities, we're not very good at it. Uh, we don't want to be kitschy. It's got to be authentic New York. Um, it's got to have mature landscaping. In fact, it was Ed Seidler who told me one day that Baron Houseman hauled huge mature trees in uh, to Paris. And so that's, uh, and, and if you go and uh, learn how they did it at the memorial, they grew those trees for over five years in New Jersey. It's very, it's fascinating, but, you know, we got to get it right. Um, it, uh, you know, some people think you have to have water, some people think you don't have to have water. And we've got a real debate going on, I call the designers versus the programmers. So Bryant Park is one of the most successful parks in New York, bar none. Uh, one of the most successful parks in the world, probably. Uh, the guy who runs all the programming there is a good friend of mine, and he's always telling me, you don't need landscape designers, you don't need architects, you gotta just let me run it. And that's what's well, not, you know, you did start with Brian Park, it's like an okay space. And, uh, and then, you know, we had another uh, you know, world-renowned, award-winning landscape architect originally, and he just sort of ignored all of the sort of truisms that Ben Peterman would tell me make Brian Park successful. So we ended up with kind of a design solution that was completely unfriendly to programming. So we know programming has to has to be part of it. Programming is hugely important, but it can't be at the expense of how the space works. So we went through a little competition, which was like our third and hopefully final landscape architect. Um, and we ended up giving it to a very young uh, young firm, kind of an older firm, young firm, Nelson Bird Waltz. Uh, Nelson and Bird are professors at the University of Virginia, their husband and wife team, who have not built a lot, um, but are very esteemed teachers. And one of their students, Thomas Waltz, bought the firm. Um, and he, they just finished uh, City Garden in, in uh, St. Louis, which is a five-acre sculpture park, gorgeous. Um, won the ULI award this year. I mean, a really, really sumptuous uh, urban space with sprinkled through art, with art sprinkled through art. That's kind of our model, but if you go to St. Louis, it's not maybe the world's best programming space. So we go back and forth, and I wish I could tell you that it was sort of an obvious answer, but. I don't think there is. I think every space is unique. And, and we are concerned about the scale of these buildings. They're big buildings. There's no doubt about it. I think if we get it right and we get the human texture right, we're going to put a cafe in the park. I, of course, want to be a beer garden. And, uh, and so I think that if we get it right, uh, people will flock there and the buildings will almost be an afterthought, except for the skyline. 